straightforward. And now we know the general feature of the feedback amplifier. The gain is reduced, the bandwidth is increased, the impedance, input-output impedance will modify according to the types of the amplifier, but they all adjusted by 1 plus Ka, okay? The magic term, 1 plus Ka. Always remember this term, okay? Okay, then how do we do sensing? We need to do some real implementation now, right? These are just broad diagrams, so this is what we're doing now. Now, this is actually very trivial. It's just how you measure your voltage on your test band. Of course, you cannot have a voltmeter inside your integrator circuit. I mean, that large voltmeter, and then with a human reading it, right? It, you need to make it a, a simple one. So this is the output of something. If I want to sense it, I put a voltmeter here. This is in a serious connection. Right, for the voltmeter measurement. Not, not serious, I'm sorry. This, what connection is this? How do you measure a voltmeter, a voltage? Parallel, right? You, you still have the circuit, you have a positive and negative probe, and then probe into the two point, right? So that is a parallel connection. So, simil so this is just how we do the sensing. So similarly, when we have a fifth forward system, and if the output is voltage, if voltage is something I interest, I'm interested in, then I'm going to have a parallel connection. Do you see this? It is just this point. Uh, if you really want to map it, this is just like this one map to here, and then this point map to here. Okay, I will erase it so that it won't be uh, difficult to see when you study. So because of this, then I'm going to sense it. This is sense. I'm going to put into the feedback network. Anyone can tell me why this is, I want to have infinite input impedance for the feedback network. Because you don't want it to draw the current. You don't want it to draw the current. Yes. But can you say it from the, you are, you are explaining correctly from the, what we have been discussing. Yeah, voltage, because this part you are sensing the voltage. And exactly like what you said, because you don't want to create a voltage divider, right? You are sensing the voltage. That's why you need to have the infinite input impedance to be ideal. But your output impedance needs to be zero, yeah? Because this is the output is voltage. I want it to be zero for ideal case. Okay, so let's look at an example. For example, this is the fifth forward amplifier. Okay, and I want to sense this voltage. I just touch it here. So I'm done with the sensing. I'm done already. But how do I do the feedback? It's go through this voltage divider. And then this is the feedback voltage. So what is the K of this circuit? Let's just recall what is the meaning of K. What's the definition of K again? It's correct, V, F, and Y, but which one divided by which one? K. Very good, so K equals to V, F divided by you say Y, which is output, right? V out, okay? What is VF divided by V out in this case? It is just a voltage divider, right? So from here, I already realized a feedback circuit, K, and the sensing with just two simple transistors. You need to be simple, right? If your feedback circuit, the whole thing is more complicated than your feed forward amplifier, probably we fail. Unless it's something super uh, critical mission, I don't know, it's possible. Like uh, when talk about gallium light tri power converter, they even have a current sensor to sense whether the uh, gallium light tri is overheater or something. 
because they are super critical, they may just break down the whole system, right? So you actually have a small circuit to sense one transistor, right? But because the transistor is big. In this case, I only have two small resistors to sense it and also do the feedback, okay? So based on this, can you tell me what should be the value of R1 and R2? Should they be large or small if I want to make it a good feedback circuit? Large. Why need to be large? You are right. Uh, from the earlier discussion, we, earlier want to, we want a large resistance from the from the view of the V out to the feedback circuit to prevent it from affecting the V out. Yeah, because good. Yeah, you you, you explain very deep, but what I'm fishing for is just you tell me that because we are sensing. The voltage. The voltage. So maybe let me just don't write anything, right? Okay, because this direction is looking into the feedback network. The network is sensing the voltage, right? So that's why I want it to be large. So if I say, give me a feedback factor of 0 0.5, you can choose 50 ohm divided by 50 ohm plus 50 ohm. You can also choose 5 million 5 mega ohm divided by 5 mega ohm plus 5 mega ohm. Both of them give me the same feedback factor. But the second one will give me a much better voltage voltage feedback because I want to sense the voltage. I don't want to increase the loading to my feed forward system. After all, this is the loading to the output of my feed forward. And you know that if I don't do it right, it will just reduce the gain. Right? That's the first thing. Good. How do we sense the current? We need to put it in series, right? So whenever your circuit has problem, you want to sense the current, you need to break the connection and then insert in between a, an emitter to see what current you get. So that is not what we are doing here. It needs to be series. So if my output is current, for example, what type of amplifier has the output with the as the current current amplifier transconductance very good yeah because output is current right so we we connect them in series same here that's what we are doing i want to sense is the output current and the convention is that the current is going into the pot we follow those convention okay Although it might be negative, right? If it's going up. Now, we make it serious. How do we do it? We make a small resistor in series of it. Now, there are many ways to sense a current. If we have a good enough technology, we actually maybe can sense the magnetic field around it. Then we know the current, right? But the cheapest way, easiest way is to put a tiny resistor here. And then we measure the voltage drop across this resistor. And then we know that I out equals to V divided by R. Based on the voltage we read it, we know what current it is. This is exactly or usually what you have in an emitter, at least a low grade one. Okay. So if we have a very small resistor, would that be a problem? Or actually this is desirable. When you try to measure the current, do you want to have a large input impedance or small input impedance? Small, right? That's why ideally I want it to be zero because it's a current sensor, right? And it makes sense again, because you break the circuit, you insert something. If you have a large resistor, you're going to screw up the circuit. The best is that you don't have resistance, okay? Now let's look at this example. This one, the whole thing, this whole thing is the fit forward. Right? It has a triangle and then followed by this transistor. This is the fifth forward. And what is the output of this circuit? Current or voltage? Current. Yeah, it's current. Right, so the output is current. So how do we sense the current? We put an RS here and let it sense. 
And then we just take the voltage across it with Vf equals to I out times Rs. Right? And then I get some feedback from there. So that means this is not feed, feed, feedbacking the current, it feedback a voltage, right? So probably this is what type of amplifier? Because this voltage is going to be the input. So what type of amplifier is this? What is the input voltage? What is the output? What type of amplifier is it? Transconductance. Right? Okay, what should be the value of Rs for current sensing? Small or large? Small, because it's in series, right? If it is large, you're going to screw up a lot of stuff. So we need it to be small. And this is consistent with what the requirement of the input of the feedback network which is sensing the current remember your feed forward is the current source but your feedback is a current sensor i want to measure how much current you output then we decide how much feedback i'm going to give to the input right 